يا عباد الله هبوا ونداء الحق لبوا فاعبدوه مخلصين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you. You are most welcome to yet another inspiring edition of your favorite program, Stories of Devotion. In this series, as we always do, we get up close with seven missionaries and other dedicated members of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community here in Africa. My guest today is Ustaz Nuhu Kofi Ben Rahman. Ustaz, you are most welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Right. Uh, Ustaz Nuhu Kofi Ben Rahman is currently the seventh missionary <coughs> at the Tablik and Tabiyar Center in Ashanti region here in Ghana. Ustaz, Zakum Lan, thank you for agreeing to uh, share your story with us. Thank you very much. Uh, who is uh, Nuhu Kofi bin Rahman? A'udhu billahi min ash-shaitan rajim. Bismillahi rahman rahim uh, Nuhu Kofi bin Rahman is a Ghanaian born Ahmadi to Mami Fatima uh, Ekua Fatima and uh, uh, Nana Abirama Kododu. I was born at Kumfi Ejra, uh, uh, Asante region. Yes. And uh, I grew up and I became a missionary. So that is no Kofi Bin Rahman. Okay, I mean, uh, guessing from the names of your parents, I don't believe they were all Ahmadis, right? Yes, please. So you were born into an Ahmadi family? Yeah, I was born. And then Ekunfi, Ekunfi where? where? Where you are from? My hometown is Ekunfi Nanabin in Central Region. Okay. But I was born in Ashanti Region. Okay, so that you stayed in Ashanti Region, Nigeria. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, I mean, uh, you know, growing up, growing up in, uh, uh, in an Ahmadi home, in an Ahmadi home, how challenging was that, you know, considering the fact that where you stayed was predominantly a Christian community? Yes. You see, as you know, Ghana is a settler country. Wherever you find yourself, you find Christians, the adulteries, and the other people, even among the Muslims, our non Ahmadi brothers and sisters, you find them. You see, so <coughs> um, uh, it's, it's quite a challenge because um, it's not easy. As in a house, you are told to observe a lot, uh, fast, and all those but when you go out, you see your friends also in touching you with another things you see so you become confused as a child because that time your mind is very young and as a result of that they're able to win some other people but when your home is very strong and well trained as Ahmadi then I don't think this thing will uh, dissuade you and uh, you, you, you will be very uh, firm on your feet Okay, uh, by, the, by this I believe that uh, uh, just as you're a missionary now, uh, you didn't give up, you didn't give in to peer pressure and so they couldn't convince you, confuse exactly. you. Exactly, they say. tried but they were not successful. <laughs> okay, uh, you know, uh, at what stage in your life uh, did you make that decision to become a missionary and what actually prompted that decision? Yes, uh, since from my infancy when I was a child, I decided to become a missionary. Though I never knew what missionary was, but <coughs> I decided there was two uh, profession that I wanted to be. That is medicine and uh, a missionary. So I, I told my father that I want to be a sofa missionary and I want to be a medical doctor. I said, Ah, how can you do the same? Uh, the two things at the same time. I said, Oh, inshallah, I will do it. Then he laughed. He said, Okay. And may Allah bless it for you. And that one, I quite remember. I was around below, beyond, uh, below ten years. I was not up to ten years. And uh, Alhamdulillah, I got that inspiration. And because um, there were my father's house uh, that used to host missionaries, every missionary that comes to our place, or our village, uh, they come to my father's house. So we have a, a guest house for uh, missionaries special guest house okay. for all missionaries and they have their table their spoons everything okay. special my father has kept it so he doesn't joke with missionaries okay so when the missionaries also visited us uh, the way they pamper us they get closer to us they carry us 
you know, they teach us. So I became very happy that ah, this is a man of God. And you can see the spiritual discipline in them, that's in the dedication. At that time, at a tender age, so I, it made me inclined that I will, I will try, I will be a missionary, inshallah. Uh, so I, when I told my father, he was surprised. And Alhamdulillah, when I completed secondary school, uh, nobody told me, nobody asked me to go to the missionary college. I went for the forms, I inquired, I failed it. Before my father or my parents, they realized, I've already failed it. I said, I'm going to mission technical. I said, ah, how? I said, yes, but that's what I said I want to do. So I, I did it and in fulfillment of my wish. Okay. Uh, you were able to fulfill that part, you know. You had you had, you had two wishes, either yes, to yes, do, those yes. are two choices: either to become exactly. a, a medical doctor, as yes, you said, right, yes, yes. Uh, and a missionary. Yes. And uh, I mean, why did you eventually, you know, decide to become a missionary, leaving the uh, I mean, uh, the, the medical aspect? Um, that one is not left out. You see, as a missionary, you are a spiritual healer. You are, you are a doctor, you are medicine, <laughs> you are okay. a spiritual healer in, the, in that sense, you know. <laughs> That's why the prophet, they say they heal and other things, like Anabi Isa. Okay. They say he cured this, he cured this, he cured they, they thought that it was just physical. Though okay. it can be physical, but spiritual also. As well as a missionary, every missionary is a spiritual healer. And that's the number one. So it has come true. Yes. And the number two also, <coughs> Alhamdulillah, Allah has endowed me with that knowledge of uh, medicine also. Oh, okay, I understand. So uh, it, it wasn't as if you were pursuing the you know the religious aspect and then leaving the other the, the other aspect. Yes. But then that was the that's the one you took first. That's why you took on first. Yes. And so you became you you were a mission you 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 like to be a missionary. You know the spiritual the spiritual healing aspect. Okay. When that was the idea that you wanted to help impact religious knowledge. Okay. To heal the the spiritually sick people. That was why you wanted to be a missionary. But. Did you know at that particular time when you made it, when you told the father you wanted to become a mission? You were you were a young boy. Yes. Now when you were making when you were you were filling the forms, you were going up going to the mission training college. But at that particular stage, were you aware of who a missionary is, the various challenges and trials that accompanied the profession? Were you aware of, of all this and then you still wanted to be a missionary? At the tender age or when I no, that, the, the time that you were filling the form, you were submitting the form. That time you were old enough. Yes, 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 because I stayed with a missionary and uh, because I wanted to be a missionary and my father also was aware, uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, I schooled at the mission house. He b b brought me from village to city to stay with a second missionary and uh, I stayed there for about five years. I schooled there, so it made me to know the, some of the challenges of the missionaries they face. Uh, because uh, I saw them, but because I was enthused about it and I had made my mind to do and there was no any other work in the world that it came to my mind that I can do apart from the missionary work. So that made me also to pursue and forget of any uh, you know, other things uh, in life. So the missionary work, you know, the, as the whole Prophet Muslim said that, yeah, that's uh, the love of something makes you deaf and blind this one is not deaf and blind it's not negative but it's positive you know because of my love for the missionary work and the way i saw the exemplary nature of those senior missionaries who came when i was young i was enthused so much so that i can never or i could never venture into any work in the world apart from the missionary work and I become very happy and excited as a missionary. Even now, I'm so much contented that nothing in the world, nothing at all, can stand between me and the missionary work at all. Okay, I think this should lead my next question. I mean, what have you gained? What have you gained as a missionary? What, how have you benefited as a missionary? Allah, may Allah bless you. You see, I've gained a lot. When I became a missionary, I've come closer to Allah. I've understood Quran very well. I've understood religion. I've understood why we were created. Like as Allah says in the Quran, that Allah created ma khalaqul jinna wa li insa illa li yaabudun. That we not create man and the jinn, but to come and worship Allah. So 
to understand religion, you have to study. You have to study. So the Prophet said that you learn from the cradle to the old age. So it means that when I became a missionary, I learned a lot. And when I learned, the more you learn about Allah or the Quran, you know Allah more and you get closer to Him. You see? So Allah said that Tarifuni Kabla and Tabuduni Fa Inlam Tarifuni Fa Kefa Tabuduni. He said, Know me very well before you worship me. If you don't know me, how do you worship me? So if to be a missionary is to you get to know Allah better, Allah more. And that will make you closer. The more you know Allah, the more closer you become. So the one benefit that I've gotten from the missionary work is that I've gotten closer to Allah. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of that. And that's number one. Number two, you see, as a missionary, um, I feel that I'm, a, I'm a able to fulfill uh, the purpose of creation. Uh, you know, Allah created us to worship Him, as I said earlier. So therefore, um, to know religion very well, uh, it means I fulfill that part. And it's a blessing. And thirdly, also, it makes it is it has able to equip me to preach the word of Allah to people to you know enlighten people about religion so when you are a missionary you get more opportunity to do that though there are many people they preach and do the work of Allah but when you become a dedicated missionary then you are able to preach people you are able to bring people to Allah and that is very good work according to the Holy Quran Surah Al Hamim Sajda he said that You see that who, who is better than the one who influences the people to Allah? You understand me? So it means that if you are able to preach or invite people into the way of Allah, then you, you, are, you, are, you are the best speaker or you are, you, are, you are good. It's better for you. So as a missionary, this is what it has benefited me a lot. It has been able to equip me to preach and to convert people and to let people know the work of Allah. To let people know how Allah is. To let people know how religion is. To let people know how to worship Allah. So to be a missionary, I've benefited a lot. There are many things uh, I can tell you, but because of time, if you still want me, I can go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, you, as you rightly said, we don't really have much time, but I also have to go to my something I really want to understand. You see, you've explained all this so beautifully, and uh, anyone who is listening to you at this stage, I'm sure, will wish to be a missionary. Because according to you, I mean, uh, the purpose for which we are created is to worship Allah Almighty. And so, if you have gotten the opportunity to get closer to Allah Almighty and also to, to I mean, to, to impact that knowledge of people so that they also get to know and worship Allah Almighty better. I mean, it's, it's, that's the work that was given to the prophets in the first place. So you are doing the work of the, of the prophet. I mean, it's very nice. But then, someone will also, after listening to all this, if he wants to now get closer and become, and become a missionary, he will feel scared because of you know, like the, the financial aspect of, of the religion, because of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the work. You become a missionary, and though you are getting all these blessings, but then, uh, the work is not that lucrative, you know, that, 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 that lucrative. You don't have that much, you, don't, you, you are not rich, you, you are not become rich. So if someone is scared to become a missionary because he fears he may not earn enough, what advice will you give to that particular person? You see, the advice, I will take it from the Quran. You see, Allah says in the Quran, Kullu man alayha fan, Surah Al-Rahman. Everything in this world will fade away or will perish or come to pass except Allah. So if you become a medical doctor or carpenter or a mason or whatever profession, engineer, there will be a time you cannot do the, that, that work again. You see, but with the intention of doing Allah's work, because Allah does not uh, die or he doesn't I mean, end his work or this thing, it means your work also continues even though you might have died or whatever. So to be a missionary is a blessing, you see, because, you know, when you become a missionary, it's not only that you become worldly, you gain worldly uh, mat materials, 
But if you are truly a dedicated missionary, you see that uh, you are children and you are children's children. Uh, they, they will never go to beg. They will never go to beg. They will live all right and they will have everything. That is when you do it dedicatedly. Yes. Um, I've never seen uh, a missionary who is so dedicated that he goes around begging or his children goes around begging. When you do the missionary very, uh, work very well, you will see uh, yourself that you are very content with whatever little that you get. After all, what is this world? What are we sending this world to? Even if you have a mansion, where are you going to sleep? Just one room. One room, even just a small space. You understand me? Where are you taking this world to? And according to Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in Bukhari, Swahi Bukhari, one of the authentic books of our hadith, he said that, man yuridullahu bi khairan yufaqihu fi deen. That whoever Allah want him, want good for him, then he makes him understand religion. You understand me? Not that he doesn't say that he make him get wealth. He make him rich. He could have said that if Allah want good for you, he will make you rich. Yes. Enjoy life. But Allah did not say that. He said, you faqih who feed deen. He will make you um, understand religion. Fikha. You know. So, and this is what we call religion. And that is what you call life. Life is about to know Allah and worship him. That is all about life. Life is not about acquiring uh, wealth uh, or uh, live luxuriously and listen. Fine, if Alhamdulillah, Allah bless you with those things. Uh, mashallah, even that one, you have to pay zakat. Uh, you have to pay, uh, pay uh, what? Sadaka, do a whole lot of things. Even you not even enjoy the wealth alone. You have to share it. So life is about to un understand God and know him very well. And therefore, um, if you ask me that uh, the challenges, why despite the challenges, I be still become a missionary. Yes, I chose to become a missionary because all the challenges, whether you are rich, you are poor, you are handsome, you are ugly or whatever, there will be challenges in your life. You will never go scores free. As Allah said in the Quran that he was, he's going to try everybody, whether you are a believer or you are not a believer, you are going to pass through challenges. At this stage, I will ask you to, uh, you know, tell us some of the uh, most inspiring incidents in your life, you know, as a missionary, how Allah Almighty, how, how, how you have gotten closer to Allah Almighty and Allah, how Allah Almighty has always been coming to your aid. Share with us some of, you know, examples from your life, actually. In my life, uh, there is, uh, I can say that um, I will narrate only two incidents. Uh, Allah has been answering my prayers and uh, all my prayers are answered. All. I would say about 99% or 95%. Um, I don't say I'm, I stand special, but um, you know, I know myself, and Allah also is a witness to whatever I'm saying. You see, when uh, you're a missionary, one thing you have to uh, know also and be inspired that you should first of all see whether Allah listen to your prayers or not. If Allah does not listen to most of your prayers, then there's something wrong somewhere. Yes. So Allah has been answering my prayers. Okay, once, give me, give me some examples. once I went to a place, when I was going, my child, uh, he, he cried that he want to go. With you? With me. I, was, I, was, I went to a tour. So he was also about uh, about five years old. I said, okay, if you, I will take you. So you know, as Islam says, that we should train the children from the infancy. Mm -hmm. So I, I tried to take him, but I was going with a motorbike, motorcycle. Okay. So I put him in front of me, not behind, because he's a child. Okay. Uh, so we went, but when we were coming, I saw that the motor was not speeding. I gasped. It was not speeding. Ah! And I could hear somebody calling me from right side. When I turn, I don't see anybody. And when I gasp, the motor is it not going. Moving. Ah! Meanwhile, it is on the road. It is moving all right. But it is not speed. It is not speeding at all. As if 
I'm just about to move. Meanwhile, it was in the last year. So I stopped. When I stopped, I, I, and somebody, I think somebody, something was pulling me. You back, yes. Pulling me back, holding my uh, uh, shirt, yes. and pulling me back. So um, I stopped. When I stopped, knowing, not knowing that the child has slept, he was sleeping totally, he has gone off, total. Ah, I said, Subhanallah. So it means that if I was speeding, this child could have fallen. And you know, the cold towel and everything, and the motorbike can run on him also. So I saw that it was not an ordinary thing. So uh, I thank Allah for that. He saved me. And the second one also is that the same motorbike matter. I was in the course of my duties, um, I had an accident. Very serious accident. Describe the accident for us to know. It was head on collision with a car, an incoming car, and uh, not knowing there was another car following it. So that the following car wanted to bypass or overtake the, uh, the incoming car. So they were struggling for passengers. Okay. There, was, there, there, were, there were two junctions. And so one junction, you can stand and pick passengers. Mm -hmm. the other. So they were just struggling. Okay. So the first one, I had gotten to the uh, a place where we can bypass each other. Yes. And he applied brake. And the second car overtook him mm -hmm. and just came to meet me. Head on collision. We crashed. Okay, let me get to you. I mean, uh, uh, this the, the, the car that was just right in front of you, the first one, mm -hmm. was coming. Uh, I mean, it was facing you, yes. but you were on the other road. Yes. So this other car tried to overtake this car. Yes. That means that the other car that is overpassing this one exactly. will now come straight exactly. facing you. I exactly. mean, this is what happened. Yes. So, so there were two cars coming. Yes. And it was and around 7.30. To, to, to and it was, it was, it was 7.30 that time. And very unfortunately, it happened on a bridge. And it had rained that evening also. So there was nowhere to escape. It's looking scary. And even the, the light, the, uh, the headlight, was that it darkens uh, my eye. Yes. And uh, it was so much that, that I could not see anything at all. So all what I could realize or I, could, I can recall is that I said, La subhanallah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, that's all. I went off. And the accident happened. And uh, I found myself in a hospital very critically and the motor got smashed the car also got smashed serious very wonderfully as if that's collided with an articulator so there was a, a doctor who was following me he followed he, he was coming okay. to the uh, hospital he saw the accident so he said that the motor rider can never survive survive so when he was also a senior doctor there so when he came, he saw me, he said, no, no. And I, I, I was, when I vomited blood, everything blood, from my nose, everywhere. So it was serious. They thought I had got maybe internal injury or something like that. And um, <clears throat> they said that my people came there. They secretly told them that uh, they should, uh, there's no hope, actually. So, so for the past three days, they had not even given even para paracetamol no medicine for for the first three days thinking in that, that in that in that circumstance in that, in that state they thought that every hour i was going to give up then i regained conscious i told them that my brothers you are doctors you are medical officers please do yours do your leave part the rest. leave the rest God. i'm not going to die you see me you see me i'm i'm of my senses i'm not mad so you just do your what you can do, leave the rest. Mm -hmm. God will take care of the rest. You do it. Then they have to cut my dress, and then dress me and uh, took me to x-ray. They took the x-ray and uh, they saw that there was a compound fracture. You know, apparently the leg had broken the, the bones. The bones, some of them have come out. Yes. And the, the, it was not even more inside again. So it was a very serious matter. And I could not sit, I could not do anything. It was just a death, a death, a yeah. death matter. So what happened was that they saw that they cannot hold it. So they 
referred me to a, a bigger hospital, Konfonachi, or St. Joseph Hospital. And Alhamdulillah, when I went there, um, I spent eight months. Okay, now eventually, uh, how, how did you get better? Let me, let me get that. Yes, I, I spent uh, almost two years in the hospital. Two years in the hospital, and uh, there, there are so many miracles that took place during my medications. But then, I mean, uh, in, in two years, you spent two years there. Did the doctors, I mean, did they give you any hope that they could treat it? Not or at all. They thought that either I'll die or I'm amputated. This is, this is their recommendation. Yes, I mean, they recommended that if anything, the, the best they could do was to amputation. amputate you. The best thing they can do is amputation. At that stage, what was going through your mind? Yes, yeah, so um, when I spent eight months in the Kofodia Hospital, that is Eastern region, uh, they lost all the ideas about me. All the they say I should go home. I said, ah, but I'm not where they, Why should I go home? But they, I, they say I should go home and come back next two weeks. Okay. Myself, I saw that no, it is not true. What they are saying, there's something fishy in it. So I called my people and they sent me home. So after a week, then I, I found myself in a critical condition. And as a missionary, I, what I was, I was seeing was different thing altogether. So I quickly called one doctor who was uh, my friend so at Kovonochi. So he said I should come. So when I went, he, he gave me to uh, one doctor that okay you mean uh which hospital the confinement yes. uh, well, i think that, that's one of the biggest in the country yes in the second region, biggest right? in ghana uh -huh. so when i went in i went there miraculously i was given to a doctor my friend doctor gave me to one uh, specialist he was a uh, orthopedic surgeon and he was the head of that surgery department. I mean, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in, in the midst of all this, I mean, what was your relationship with the Khalifa Timasi in the midst of all this? Yes, 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 yes. Alhamdulillah, I had written to Huzu through Amir Wahab Adam. May Allah have mercy on him. Amen. Oh, so, um, so, and then um, what was the reply from the Khalifa Timasi? He replied that, Nuhu, you get well, and everything that you wishes will come to pass. And uh, you. What was you, that, uh, was, was this letter? before or after the doctors had declared that you either die or they had they, they, they that they is when i was at kofodia hospital at the doctor had four declared months that four you months die. And they, yes. i mean the doctors had lost hope yeah they have lost hope at all and the leg also had developed also myelitis and then as the Masi told you that yes it will uh, be well you walk you you do everything and your later life will be better than your former life and now as as, as i can see you are not dead and i know your leg is amputated yes that's a miracle, that's a, a, a miracle. Yes. and that's because i mean you you dedicated your life, Allah yes. Almighty has saved yes. you through uh, his When I started life. even walking, some of the nurses and the doctors, they heard it. They said they want to see me. So I went to the hospital and they saw, they said, how come that I'm able to walk? Now, you know, after, <laughs> after this letter from Hazrat Khalifat Masi and what we are all witnessing today, uh, what advice will you give to uh, not only uh, the uh, members of the Ahmadiyya Ahmed community, but uh, I mean, the, uh, all the viewers watching you now about why they should establish uh, communication with the Khalifa al -Masi. You see, the Khalifa al -Masi is a representative of Allah, his prophets, and uh, on this earth. You see, so if you are able to communicate with him, you are able to get in touch with him, then it's a blessing. You see, so I will advise everybody that he should be writing letters to uh, Huzu and he should try to create a bond, strong bond with Huzu so that his life Will not will, will be guided by, by 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 Allah because it is Allah who has put him there. He represents Allah on the earth. So how will you be happy if you are able to interact with such a holy personality? So it's a blessing to even at least write to him and for him even to reply you. When you get his letter, 
it is as if you have gotten uh, something very, uh, let's say, a treasure. So I would advise everybody that if you have any challenge or you don't have any challenge, whatever you have, whatever situation you are in, you try to link with Hazrat Khalifa al -Masi. And that is the blessing because he is there for us. He is there for us. Because of us, he is there. You understand me? Yes. And Allah has blessed Ahmadiyya Muslim community so much so that we cannot get any of such leadership in the world. It doesn't exist. No matter how powerful nations, rich nations, and other people they want to establish Hilafat, they are not able to do it. And this is the blessing Allah has given to Ahmadiyya Muslim community. Why are we not using that opportunity? So I would advise everybody to write to Huzu so that his life also will be guided by Huzu and uh, Quran and other Islamic teachings. I will advise everybody to keep on writing to Huzu because I mean that that is uh, that, that that's when they will get their guidance. I mean that will be your last words. Does that come to you? I know you are a very busy person, and then uh, spending time with us, uh, you are much grateful to, to you for spending time with us. Does that come once again? Thank you very much. May Allah bless. Well, our viewers, so that brings us to the end of our program today, Stories of Devotion. We just finished speaking with Ustaz Noho Kofi bin Rahman, who is currently a serving missionary at the Tablik and Tarbiya Center in the Ashanti region here in Ghana. I have been inspired once again, and I want to believe that you have been inspired as well. And until we meet again next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.